This video is going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions or mixed numbers when you don't have common denominators. The strategy that I'm going to talk about in this video is going to work for any fractions that you're adding and subtracting. Um, typically it works best with adding two fractions at a time rather than a whole line of fractions at once, but it can be adapted. Um, one other thing to know is that this might not get you the most simplified answer as easy, as soon as possible, but it's a consistent method that just means you have to make sure that you're double checking to simplify your fraction at the end and then you'll be good to go. So let's like it, take a look at two thirds and one eighth. In order to complete the strategy we're going to do what I like to call the octagon for really no reason other than that where there's going to be an empty sp white space in the middle that is in the shape of an octagon. So I have 2 over 3 plus 1 over 8. I'm going to take the 2 thirds out. And I'm going to put it off to the side. And I'm going to do that because I need to change 2 thirds so that it has a common denominator. So I'm going to take two thirds and I'm going to look at the denominator of the other fraction. I'm going to look at the, at the eight. And I'm going to multiply two thirds times eight over eight. And when I put that back into my problem, two times eight is 16 and three times eight is 24. So I've taken two thirds and changed it to 16 over 24. Then I'm going to look at the 1 8th and I'm going to do the exact same thing but with the other denominator. So we're going to take out 1 8th and I'm going to multiply 1 8th by the other denominator by that 3 I'm going to multiply it by 3 over 3. And I'm going to put it back in. 1 times 3 is 3 3 times 8 is 24. I had a plus sign up here, so I'm going to put a plus sign down here. And what you're going to see in the middle is a roughly octagonal shape. It has roughly 8 sides, so I call it the octagon. Now, you might be wondering why I took the denominator of the other fraction. I did that because that way I'm going to get the same number at the bottom and it's always going to work because you're always multiplying these two numbers together. So over here it was 3 times 8 and over here it was 8 times 3 and that's the same number you're just flip flopping it and I got 24 on the bottom both times. So to continue this long red. 16 times 3, 16 plus 3 is going to be 19. 24 on the bottom stays 24. And I have my final answer for 2 over 3 plus 1 over 8. Let's take a look at a subtraction problem. We have 4 over 7 minus 1 over 2. I'm going to do the same thing here. Nothing's really going to change. So I'm going to take out the 4 sevenths and I'm going to multiply it by the other denominator which is 2, so I'm going to multiply it by 2 over 2. Put it back in. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 7 is 14. I'm done with this, so I'm going to move over to the other fraction which is 1 half. Take that out multiply using the other denominator, that's 7 over 7. 7 times 1 is 7, and 2 times 7 is 14. This was a subtraction problem, so I have to make sure that I'm subtracting down here. And then you see that I have 8 minus 7, which is 1, and 14 on the bottom stays 14. And then I have my final answer for this question. Now we're going to look at two more examples. And I'm going to start off this first example with something a little bit bigger. I'm going to start off with 14 over 20. I'm sorry, 3 and 14 over 20 plus 2 
and 12 over 13. Couple things going on here. First of all, I'm going to look at 14 over 20, and I'm going to see that 14 over 20 can be simplified. I don't have to simplify 14 over 20. I can leave it the way it is, but if I simplify this, that means I'm going to be looking at smaller numbers and things are going to be less complex. So I'm going to choose to simplify. If you forget to simplify, you're going to get the right answer eventually. You're just going to have a more complex number and you're going to have bigger numbers that you're multiplying with. Not necessarily a bad thing, I just find that it creates more room for error. So I'm going to take 14 over 20, simplify that, end up with 7 over 10. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 and 7 over 10 plus 2 and 12 over 13. Now I'm going to do my exact same octagon again. Even though there's whole numbers in here, I'm going to ignore them for the beginning of the problem until I get both of these fractions to have the same denominator. So the whole numbers are going to go on pause for a minute. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the 7 tenths and I'm going to multiply it using the other denominator by 13 over 13. Now 7 times 13, well I don't know that one off the top of my head, so 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 2 is 9, so I have a 91 on the bottom. And 10 times 13, well I know that multiplying by 10 just adds a 0, is 130. Then I'm going to take out the 12 over 13. And I'm going to multiply it using the other denominator, which is a 10. So that's by 10 over 10. 12 times 10 is 120. 13 times 10 is 130. Now that I've done this, I'm going to bring down everything that I didn't touch. I didn't touch the 3, so that comes down. The plus sign or the 2. So now I have 3 and 91 over 20 plus 2 and 100, uh, 91 over 130, excuse me plus 2 and 120 over 130. So I know my denominator is going to stay the same. 3 plus 2 is 5. 91 plus 120 is 211. So I'm going to put 211 up here. And I'm going to notice that I have a bigger number on the top than I do on the bottom. And that's a problem because that means that this is not as simplified as it could be. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to make the adjustment. I know that 211 is really close to 130. Like if you double 130, you would get 260. So this is only, this only has one hole in there. So I'm going to take 211 and I'm going to subtract one hole or 130 pieces out of it. And I'm doing 130 because that's the number on the bottom. So 211 minus 130, 1 minus 1 is, 1 minus 0 is 1, 11 minus 3 <coughs> is 8, 1 minus 1 is 0. So now I have 81 over 130. But I still have that one hole that I subtracted out. So instead of 5, that's now going to be a 6 and 81 over 130. We're going to take a look at one more. And this one more is 4 and 3 eighths minus, where is it, 2 and 1 fifth. Well, that's not right. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to neaten this up so it doesn't look so sloppy. I'm going to take out my 3 eighths. And I'm going to multiply it by the denominator on the other fraction. So I'm going to multi multiply it by 5 over 5. So 3 over 8, 3 times 5 is 15. 8 times 5 is 40. So 3 over 8 becomes 15 over 40. 
I'm also going to move this four down right now just to make absolutely sure that it's there. You can move it down at the end, you can move it down as you change each fraction. It's kind of up to you. Now I'm going to take out the one-fifth. I'm going to multiply it by the other denominator, which is going to be that eight. One times eight is eight. Five times eight is forty. Then I'm going to take down that two. And now that I have both of my numbers, I know that I'm going to take down the subtraction sign. Now all I need to do is do the subtraction. Four minus two is two. Fifteen minus eight. Fifteen minus eight, thinking that through in my head, is going to be seven. And then I have forty on the bottom, so that stays the same. Seven can't go into forty, so that can't be simplified, so that's going to be my final answer. Now, uh, the question that you're going to be solving is three and one-ninth plus two and one-fifth.